we have a team that supports the proposal and we have a team which is against the proposal, all right? So let's hear from them. Uh, who goes first? Yeah, for or against? Proposition, okay, for. All right, opening statement. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today our debate topic is because privacy is an inherent right. Internet service providers or the ISP should not be legally bound to provide authorities with user identities or other private information, even in the cases when the user is suspected of criminal activity. In this case, the authorities mean the organizations with power to provide orders, take deci make decisions, and enforce laws. Both the police and the government are included in this category. As the proposition side, our stance is that the ISP should not give any private information, including addresses, phone numbers, web history, and etc., of an individual to the authorities under any circumstances. First of all, we would like to discuss why privacy is an inherent human right. As civilized and well-educated citizens, we learn from history that privacy is becoming increasingly important in our modern world. Numerous countries like Australia, Canada, and the United States are continuously releasing new laws about privacy, both for online and offline. There are also jobs that specifically administer the compliance of these privacy laws, known as privacy commissioners. The existence of these laws and occupations signify the importance of privacy of it to an individual and how much it is valued in the society. If privacy is highly regarded in reality, then the policy should apply online, on the online world as well, especially since the internet is a place where even the slightest piece of information can be spread worldwide within minutes. <laughs> now that we talked about the general right of privacy as a regular citizen, we should shift our attention to the situation when an individual has been suspected for crime. It is true that we believe that the ISP should not give the private information to the authorities, but the situation is completely different if the if the consent of that individual is given first. This is the focus of our second argument. If the ISP companies actually have the ISP companies actually have policies saying that they must gain a person's permission before giving out private information to anyone. Consider this, if the innocent people want to prove themselves innocent, why wouldn't they give the consent? Even for companies that do not follow the policies previously mentioned, the ISP should still not be legally bound to give the private information to the authorities because their existence is built on a commercial basis with its main aim to make profit. That means that they would not go against what most of the customers expect of them. Even if their policy does support giving information to the authorities, they still risk of losing clients because they have leaked information without authorization. In order to maintain their profit, they should keep their reputation as a private and, tri and trustworthy company with their, which their clients can comfortably leave their personal information to. These are our main, three main statements. It will be further explaining our complete arguments. Thank you. Opposing side. Good afternoon everyone, I'm Claudia, and as the opposition team, we advocate that ISP should be legally bound to provide authorities with user identities or other private information, especially in cases of suspected criminal activity. So, what is privacy to you? The controversial nature of this debate is due partly to the subjective view of what is private and what isn't. For the purposes of this debate, we see private information as information that an individual deems personally sensitive and special. This may include your WhatsApp messages, medical history, or school reports. Our first argument illustrates how the convenience of the internet in the 21st century has enabled individuals to exploit it as a crime committing platform. Many traditional crimes that originally occurred offline are now exercised on the internet, from money laundering, phishing, to identity theft. A 2011 threat prediction report found that cyber criminals are now posing new threats every 3.5 seconds due to the sheer speed of the internet. That is, about 27 new cyber threats since the start of my speech. Such threats can range from identity theft to cyber ter terrorism. This leads on to my second argument, which to our second argument, which demonstrates how the disclosure of private information is often necessary for the purposes of criminal conviction and social administration. Section 20, Section 58 of the Personal Data Privacy Ordinance of Hong Kong states that personal data for the purpose for the purposes of the prevention of or detection of crime, the capture or prosecution of offenders, and the assessment or collection of tax is exempt from the fair processing notice 
where individuals are notified that their data is being processed. The Act recognizes that it is sometimes appropriate to disclose personal data for certain purposes to, to do criminal justice. In these cases, individuals' rights may occasionally have to be restricted. Our third argument asserts that traditional and cyber crimes are essentially the same and should be given fair treatment. If not, profound physical impact will result from unregulated cyber crimes compromising individuals, corporations, and even national security. As the internet has become an unparalleled technology, it is no longer only a need but a necessity for ISPs to cooperate with law enforcement to ensure this valuable technology is not abused. Thank you. All right. Hello everyone, our first argument is that privacy is an inherent human right. From the Deuteronomy Legal Dictionary Online, privacy is defined as a person's right to control access to his or her personal information, and it is a requirement for maintaining the human condition with dignity and respect. Privacy has been the basis that the society is developing on over the course of history. In Article 12 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, no one should be subjected to arbitrary interference with his privacy, family, home, or correspondence. The International Co Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and in many other international and regional treaties have also agreed that uh, privacy is a fundamental human right. Privacy is important because without it, surveillance of information will be abused. Privacy issues relating to personal data online include insecure electronic transmission, data trail, blocks of email, messages, online transaction, and web page history. In the previous two years, the Hong Kong Pre Preventive Association Limited has collected personal information of 36,000 people in the name of Who Citizen Medical Checkup Scheme. These information were also transferred to Argo Direct, an insurance company. On the 1st of April 2013, the Hong Kong government introduced a new requirement for personal data ordinance, which asked the legal direct to discard all the personal details before the 13th of September. Being watched and tracked online is like being stalked by someone in real life. Such privacy invading action make us feel, feel like a loss of freedom. From 1946 to 1990, the former East German government applied censorship on organizations such as Sobian Folk Theatres, the state of the symbol of Sobian Folk Culture, the publisher and the Sobian Film Group to administrate censors and completely finance the media. And this would be our society future as if we follow an ever intrinsic eye into our personal and private lives. Protecting a person's basic human rights is very important online at is it offline. For example, torturing and raping are unacceptable under any circumstances, whether in real life or on the internet. There was a news article in UK Guardian in September of 2011 about a woman being sexually harassed online for more than three years by stalkers. The person her online and sent her naked photos to her friends and family, while pretending that she was sexually attracted to strangers online, which lead to a situation of the strange males turning up at her house. The person was charged and imprisoned. It proves that these charges were valid against both online and offline offenses. In our current world, netizens do inevitably leave traces on the ISP record for every site and every information they enter. However, this does not mean that we have to turn this nature of the internet into a tracking system. We should just leave the information alone. If the authorities want to get the information for the crimes, they can find it using their own record instead of uh, asking the ISP to give them. Thank you. Alright, so the first argument was uh, privacy is basically human rights. It shouldn't be violated, and the police has other means to uh, investigate if they want to. Alright, your argument. Hello again, I'm Claudia, and I'm going to discuss the first argument. The accessibility and efficiency of the internet has enabled individuals to use it as a platform to commit crimes because of the explicit advantage of committing crimes online. The convenience of the internet means um, many of its, the, the disadvantages of its easy access is overlooked. Hackers who post hacking manuals online have enabled even amateurs um, the knowledge of how to hack, thereby greatly amplifying the number of possible wrongdoers. Although it may be surprising, a, large major, um, a lot of um, experts behind cybercrimes are actually kids or teenagers who have learned how to exploit internet, exploit the network online. For example, the recent I Love You virus in the Philippines that resulted in billion dollars of damages was produced by teenagers. Um, 
Um, a famous cartoon published by the cartoonist Peter Senner um, shows, illustrates one dog sitting on a computer and another dog saying to it, on the internet, no one knows that you're a dog. Clearly, anonymity on the internet is a predominant reason cyber criminal, criminals can act without restraint. Plato's story of the ring of Gyges illustrates this point clearly. Plato asserts that when there is a ring which should make anyone invisible, um, not even a just man, just or honorable man, can resist the temptation of greed, and therefore commit theft, because he knows he will never be discovered. According to the FBI's Internet Crime Report in 2010, only one criminal is jailed for every 50,635 victims. When an individual can commit crimes with a minimal risk of getting caught, crime rates will only rocket. Apart from easily concealing their IP addresses and location with codes, criminals can break into international networks to work and share information with a community of other um, transnational criminals at an unprecedented level, all the while sitting stationary in front of their laptop. Whereas traditional criminals risk larger chances of apprehension due to physical exposure, the short period of time taken to perpetrate cyber crimes means cyber criminals can slip away, virtually unnoticed. For example, traditional drug traffickers traffic drugs a bit at a time to minimize detection, but cyber drug dealers may use encrypted emails to purchase large, qu large quantities of drugs all at once. With so many technological advantages, cyber criminals already seem hardly immune to conviction. Imagine losing the thin trail of evidence that can be provided by the ISPs. Thank you. Right. So their argument is, well, internet is something different from offline. Social consequences is very big if we allow cyber criminals to hide their identities over time. All right? Okay. All right. The second argument. Our second argument is the legal responsibility the ISPs have as a company. Before we sign up as a users of the ISPs, we have to read through the contract. If we pay more attention to the contracts or the terms, we can detect that one of the terms um, we can find in the Google privacy policy is to protect the customer's private information. That is, we will share your private information with companies, organizations, or individuals outside of Google when we have your consent to do so. Once we have pressed the button, agree all of the terms, an agreement is made between the ISP and us, the users. This means that customers have the right or the initiative to decide whether the information is shown to the authorities or not, but not the ISPs themselves. When the ISPs need to use our, our information for advertising or for other purposes, they must get our consent first. Otherwise, they will violate the terms and have to bear the legal responsibility. In the late July of last year, a scandal of the Olympus Court Company about the illegal sale of the customer's public information aroused a great controversy in the Hong Kong society. It sold private information like names and shopping records to six other companies, um, making an astonishing profit of about 44 million Hong Kong dollars. The entire process was made, made without the customer's permission. This provoked an outrage among the Hong Kong citizens because they think that their privacy was invaded. The Octopus Court Company was blamed and charged for violating the contract signed with the customers. Another example was that in August of last year, the Wall Street Journal exposed that Facebook might violate the privacy policy by selling the private information to the advertising company. This aroused great controversy all over the world. People began to evaluate the privacy by hiding some of their private information, like their mobile numbers. Some investigations from Taiwan were launched towards Facebook. From these, we can see that the public have a very high expectation of ISPs to protect their privacy, and that they think the private companies have no right to use the private information of their users without authorization. According to law applied by most of the countries, like the USA and the UK, Evidences collected by unreasonable search and seizure cannot be used to charge the suspects. So, since the ISPs would violate the laws if they do not get the consent first, that private information would become useless anyway. Alright, thank you very much. So the second argument is that, well, why don't we get the consent from the users? Right? So that ISPs are free to give up the information if users are free. 
Hello everyone, I'm Lisa from Opposition. Our second argument is that the disclosure of private information is oftentimes necessary for the purposes of criminal conviction and social administration. Although we agree that privacy is inherent, we believe it is not absolute. This applies equally to the virtual and real world. Disclosure of private information is sometimes a must in social administration cases, such as giving out one's basic information to get an ID card. It's also a fact that almost all countries have laws to limit privacy, such as people, people have to provide their income information to let the nat national tax system run properly. This is even more crucial when it comes to criminal activity. <laughs> <laughs> Let's imagine such a case. The local police go to a supermarket, show a search warrant, and ask the supermarket staff to open all the customers' bags in the lockers because they suspect drugs in there. And then, at this time, the staff has to open the bags and doesn't need the permission from the customers. Here, the supermarket is the service provider for the customers. The police are the authority. The personal belongings in the bags are of course the customer's privacy. In this case, however, the provider is legally bound to provide the authorities with its customer's private information. The requirement to disclose private belongings may not be acknowledged by all, but everyone should understand that it is a necessary procedure for the public safety. Online cases are of no difference. Our emails in our inbox, our photos on Facebook are like our bags in the supermarket lockers. Society will not properly work if ISPs do not cooperate by providing user information. In Finland, in 2008, an unidentified individual published an advertisement on a dating website. The individual used the information of a 12-year-old minor, stating that he was looking for intimate relationship with a boy. The boy's father went to court. However, the ISP refused to provide the identity of the troublemaker during legal action. In this case, the European Court of Human Rights held that the ISP made a violation of the Human Rights Convention. That means the European Court believes violation of law when the ISP does not provide the individual's information in criminal issues. To sum up, privacy cannot be absolute and the disclosure of private information is oftentimes just a necessity. Thank you. Right, so they're saying that, well, yes, privacy is important, but what about the public security, right? Okay, third argument. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Robin from Proposition Science. Uh, according to our second argument, there are some companies that follow the policy of giving information after receiving consent. As for the other companies that follow a different set of rules, they face another problem. That is the drop in their economy, which is our third argument. We believe that the ISP stands as an individual, which means that they should not intervene in the matters between the authorities and the suspect. Because ISP's main aim is to be, be a commercial entity, not a political entity. This does not only protect the reputation of the ISP, but also their clients' private, privacy. We can take PCCW as an example. In the introduction in the official web web website of PCCW, the test states that PCCW Limited is a Hong Kong-based company which holds interest in telecommunications, media, ID solutions, property development and investment, and other businesses. We can see that PCCW gains profit by providing service to their customers. Although it is true that the PCCW states in their privacy policy that they will use personal data from, uh, for prevention or detection of crime under reasonable situations, it is also a fact that a strong enforcement of this policy will bring, bring down the number of users of this company. Recently, Facebook have uploaded new software, Facebook Home for Android phones, which is viewed as a Facebook takeover of Android and a significant hit to Google. Because it puts Facebook's updates, contacts, messaging service, photos, and soon more invasive, invasive advertising directly onto your phone's lock screen and home screen. It is described that home erodes any idea of privacy. 
If you install this, then it is very likely that Facebook is going to be able to track your every move and every little action, which causes public concerns on privacy and leads to clients' distrust to Facebook. As a result of this, Facebook had to post a blog to ease its privacy concerns and regain its trustworthiness. If Facebook has not taken a quick action of solution, this issue may slow down the econ economic development of Facebook and hence lead to a loss in business. The fact that Facebook realizes and quickly solves this problem indicates the importance of reputation and profit to the ISP companies. And in order to keep these two things, the ISP, the ISP should not give the information to the authorities. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Uh, so they're saying that, well, what about the commercial nature of ISP businesses? Uh, it actually cuts many non-criminal users if they allow them to give information. All right, so your third argument. Our third argument is that traditional crimes and cyber crimes are essentially the same and should be given fair treatment. If not, there will be grave and physical repercussions as a result of cyber crimes to individuals, websites, corporations, and national security. Firstly, ISP should provide users' private information to their government to ensure online and offline crime are treated fairly. Without great online law enforcement, online offenses can escape from legal responsibility and generate unfair treatment towards online and offline crimes. To act in accordance with the law, ISPs should provide users' private information in criminal cases, so that government can trace users' identity and collect sufficient evidence to arrest suspects. And it can facilitate a prosecution process and uphold justice between online and offline crimes. Secondly, ISP should give users private information to government due to the offline repercussions rooted from online crimes. Take cyber terrorism as an example. As U.S. relies on a computerized system to run national network, including power of transportation. If cyber terrorism is carried out and the system is hacked, citizens will suffer from offline consequences such as blackout or collapse of network. Further, cyber terrorism can possibly, possibly transform into real-life terrorist activities. Many offline consequences have originated from online crimes. Therefore, ISP should give private information to the government to avoid great offline repercussions. Thirdly, what will happen if private information is not provided in criminal cases? Government relies heavily on the cooperation and assistance from ISPs for regional and transporter search of computer data banks. ISP held cyber crime policy and law enforcement, and police seek evidence to prove one to be innocent or guilty. Some people argue that it is unfair to the suspect. But would you rather withhold your information and remain a suspect forever, or provide and regain your innocence? Would you want an actual criminal to remain only a suspect forever and never be convicted and held responsible, held responsible for his crimes? In online criminal cases, computers and users' identity can be the most important source of evidence. Even when a computer is not directly used for criminal purposes, it may contain records of values to criminal investigators. ISP should be legally bound to provide users' private information to the government or the police. This can help arrest the offenders and regain their credibility for innocent suspects. All right, thank you very much. So same line of argument. They are saying that well, criminals can easily you know, get set free, free if you don't. So somehow, you know, force ISPs to give up certain information so that criminal cases are involved. All right. Uh, open debate, right? Uh, closing statement first. Different from this. Oh, wait, no, I mean, it's open. Open debate. Yeah, I think open debate first, right? Yeah. Uh, let's just follow the procedure on the syllabus. What do you think? Well, what did you prepare? You have a closing statement first uh, as well? Before the debate? Okay, <laughs> that's, that's kind of weird. <laughs> Alright, so one more statement from each side. Okay, alright, so that's a one minute one, right? Yes. Okay, alright. Uh, hi. Uh, I hope that our argument has clearly proved our point that ISPs are not legally bound to give the private information of an individual to the authorities for any reason. Yes. This is the same with Swiss banks. Knowing that the banks are required to not give out any of their clients' personal information, consider why it is that the Swiss banks are still considered the most secure and trustworthy bank in all the world, despite all the rumors of corrupt clients that 
place their money with them. If the Swiss banks can maintain their reputation by protecting the customer's privacy, and the ISPs, as we have proved, are often criticized when they leak information, which one do you think is better for both the people and the company? All right, thank you. And the closing statement? Uh, at conclusion, just as in the offline world, when we confronted with criminal situations, our private information is given to the authorities. And as well in the online, we should also do so. Uh, there is another um, new situation. If, like in the offline world, if uh, the traditional crime, such as stealing, is actually solved by monitor. monitor. However, uh, if we see ISP as a monitor, then what ISP pr provides is not our uh, private information. And that does not really violate the law. And imagine in a world without ISP. How could uh, how the police solve our crime without those things existing? Thus, giving information, private information, to government is to the benefit of the entire society. Nowadays, as internet has become so advanced, it is very easy to commit a crime via internet access. Laws should also be established for the internet situation as well, so that people can access the world safely. And therefore, a government can fulfill its role of guarding and protecting its citizens from either a real world or internet hazards, which could also become life threatening. By doing so, not only small, uh, not only should personal safety be secured in the internet, but protection of online information of significant corporations or banks is also confirmed, which means thousands uh, or even millions of people are secure. Now, open debate time, uh, six minutes. Do you have any questions to each other? Okay, I have a question for the side. Uh, you talk a lot of examples, like for Facebook's octopus company, that you talk about like these uh, ISPs selling their, their private information to commercial companies. But our, our topic is about whether ISP should give information to the authorities and to how, like, criminal activities, so these two are totally different things, so what do you say about these examples? Hello, Tati. Thank you for your question. Um, we consider, we're considering um, the Octopus co company or the Facebook as the private company. As, as we have mentioned first, um, um, the private companies should um, remain independent and individual because they are the commercial unities and organizations but not the political um, organizations. They are not subjected to the, to the government. So um, we are using the example um, to, to um, justify that the private company should not um, intervene um, the, the, the um, investigation between the individuals, the subset, subset and the government. So uh, you said that um, the uh, the government should find their own method to um, help uh, to secure the internet. But what is that? Like? I mean, if they don't use ISP, what what else could they do? Uh, I think the government, they have their own method of like investigating because the police, they all have a database on the system. So they can just use that method to like investigate and instead of using the ISPs because they can investigate and they can interview the people and meet them in person as well. The database, database is far from enough in like cyber crime cases in a lot of criminal activities. Like sometimes without the help of ISP, you couldn't even know who the individual criminal is. So how can you even uh, so these kind of cases with just with databases with interviews, you cannot even know who he is. Be be 
because uh, we have the um, contract with the ISPs. So the, the target the government um, investigate should be the subscribers, but not the ISPs. So they should ask the subscribers instead of the ISPs. Um, I have a question for the first speaker. Um, so you said that protecting a person's basic human right is very important both online and offline. And um, we gave the example that in September 2011, um, there was a woman who was sexually, sexually harassed online. Um, um, so I, my question is that if people can also be sexually harassed online, um, if we don't use the ISPs to track and provide evidence, for the authorities to find the criminal and convict them, then how how can we protect the basic rights of humans online? Is there are many ways in protecting basic human rights, but uh, sorry, asking the ISP is not is just not the way to investing crime because like anybody else, if you are investigating a crime and when the police ask the third party for evidence, they have the right to keep silence. And same as the ISP because they, in this case they are standing as an individual. So I believe that the police should find other ways uh, to get the, enough evidence to for this crime. Um, Alright, uh, I will open the debate to the floor. Uh, I get two questions because we are running out of time. Two questions. Okay, what's your question? Um, I have a question for the proposition. Um, you guys said that the profit and uh, the profit of the company is greater than is of greater importance than solving crimes. Um, is that what you meant, or is did you mean something else? All right, good question. Second question. Maybe anybody has another question. This is your last chance. Any questions? No. You have to decide which team has won the debate, though. All right? Okay. All right. So just one question. Uh, we we are not we are not focusing on the moral aspect. We are just focused on the uh, uh, the the business identity. Uh, so we we are just. To, uh, we are just uh, emphasizing that the ISP is stand as stand as an individual. It, it is a commercial entity. Yeah. <laughs> it will say that like may, to the ISPs protecting the pri a client's privacy and making pro profit is actually a bit more important. But to the government's national security may be more important. But the, since the ISP stands as an individual, then to them that their main since their main aim is to make money, then yeah. <laughs> since their main aim is to make money, then that's their pri that that's their like priority and their interest. And that's what the customers want as well. Alright, so if you don't have any questions, that will be the end of the debate, right? And we have to decide which team has won. Alright, uh, show of hands. Uh, who thinks um, the, uh, the full side, the yeah, proposition side, was more persuasive and convincing? You agree with them? Raise your hand. I guess it should not be legally bound to give information to the police. Alright, thank you very much. Alright, two things. No, opposing side was more persuasive and convincing.
Congratulations. <laughs> All right, last, last question before you go. If opposing side was more convincing, meaning the ISPs can give information to the police without you agreeing, right? How many of you have ever downloaded something illegally even once? DVD, CD, put your hand. Now, can you allow your ISP to give that information to the police? I mean, you are now technically saying that, yes, I'm a criminal. <laughs> the police can get that information, right? <laughs> right. But I mean, you agree, so. <laughs> no, it was, it was good, very convincing. All right, thank you very much.